Okay, so the first is, we can measure how much you value something by looking inside your brain. You don't even have to tell us anything about it. So we can measure your preferences by putting you in an MRI machine and taking snapshots of your brain in action. And we can predict your decisions. The brain weighs evidence and value separately to make a decision. Turns out the brain has evolved an elegant and it turns out mathematically optimal way of solving this problem. All this means is that you've got two buckets in your brain and each time you get a little bit of evidence saying the light is red, it goes into the red bucket. If you get a little bit of evidence that the light is yellow, it goes into the yellow bucket. Whichever bucket fills up first wins. That's the decision that you make. And the way it does this is that every neuron, when it responds to a stimulus, suppresses the activity of its neighbors. That's great if you've only got one thing to consider. How about when you walk into the grocery store and you're confronted with this? Now you've got hundreds or thousands of neurons suppressing each other. It's a lot harder to make a decision in this context, and usually you feel worse about it afterward. Principle four, probably the most important. Our brains are wired to be social. We can't help but consider the social context whenever we make any decision. My colleagues at Stanford University, for example, have shown that by scanning the brains of a limited number of people in the laboratory, they can predict the effectiveness of micro-lending campaigns on the internet. That seems like a good thing. We could also use the same approach to fine tune our messages to help people make healthy choices. I think another area of potential application is aligning consumers with products, right? This is sort of precision marketing. 